Hello everyone, my name is Anitsu, and I'm back with another Digimon video. So, the English tutorial app is finally out, and let's just explore it for a little bit. Alright, tutorial one. In this tutorial, you will learn the basics of the Digimon card game. This includes uh, playing Digimon, Digivolving, and breeding. In the draw phase, you draw one card from your deck. However, the player that goes first cannot draw on their first turn. During the breeding phase, you can only do one of the following. Place one card from your Digi-Egg deck face up in the breeding area. This is called hatching a Digi-Egg. Move a level 3 or higher Digimon from your breeding area to the battle area, or do nothing. This time, let's hatch a Digi-Egg. Place one Digi-Egg from your Digi-Egg deck face up in the breeding area. So it's having us hatch a Digi-Egg. Hatched uh, Digimon are level 2. If uh, you uh, later Digivolve them uh, into level 3 or higher, you can move them to the battle area during the breeding phase. Digivolving a Digimon causes it to be one level higher than it was. Let's Digivolve uh, Koromon in this example in the breeding area. The Digivolution conditions of uh, the level 3 Agumon in your hand are that it must Digivolve into... Uh, a red level 2 Digimon. It has a memory cost of 0. Koromon is a red level 2, so it meets these conditions. Take the Agumon in your hand and place it on top of the Koromon to Digivolve. When you do, you get to draw one card from your deck as the Digivolution bonus. Try playing the Biomon in your hand in order to play a Digimon. You have to pay its play cost. Place the Biomon in your hand into the battle area and pay its cost of 2. In order to pay memory costs, you move the memory counter that many spaces away from your side of the memory gauge. As long as you can pay the memory cost, you can play powerful level 5 or 6 Digimon if you want. Digimon that played from your hands cannot attack that turn. Your turn ends when the memory counter moves to the opponent's 1 or higher on the opponent's side of the memory gauge. If you use uh, lots of high-cost cards, you're giving your opponent more memory to use it during their next turn. Try moving a Digimon from the breeding area to the battle area. Since Agumon is a level 3, you can move it to the battle area. So the big reason why this is, is because, uh, as you noticed, uh, Digitama don't have any DP, which is their power stat, so they can't really go to the battle area if they don't have a DP. There's no memory cost uh, for moving a Digimon from the breeding area. Moving Digimon in this way does not count as playing them, so the Digimon can still attack at that turn. Digimon moved uh, to the battle area cannot uh, be returned to the breeding area. You can Digivolve from the battle area as well. Try Digivolving Biomon into Cordromon. Take the Cordromon in your hand and place it on top of the Biomon, then pay the required memory cost. Draw one card as the Digivolution bonus, and then uh, the Digivolution is complete. Digivolution doesn't count as uh, playing the card, so the Digivolution uh, card uh, can attack that turn. 
However, if you play a Digimon from your hand, then Digivolve on top of it, it still can't attack. So the reason why it still can't attack is because it is taking whatever state that Digimon was and just keeping that state as it is treating it as the same Digimon. In this tutorial, we'll be going over basics of battle, victory conditions, getting rid of uh, all of your opponent's security stack, and then attacking them directly. Now then, it's time to attack your opponent. You attack by taking one of the upright or unsuspended cards and rotating it sideways uh, so that it is suspended. Suspend your Agumon to declare the attack. You can attack your opponent or any of their suspended Digimon. Right now your opponent doesn't have any suspended Digimon, so you'll attack the opponent. When you attack a player, you perform a check on one of their security. That card is revealed as Hammer Spark, an option card. When a card with a security effect is revealed by a security check, then the effect activates. Hammer Spark's security effect is gaining to memory, so the memory counter will move two spaces to the opponent's direction. If the memory counter moves to one or higher on the opponent's side of the memory gauge, it will become their turn once the attack is over. Once a security card activates its security effect, it's placed uh, in its owner's trash. Security effects that do not require a memory cost in order to activate. Time to block one of your opponent's attacks. Blocking is uh, defending against uh, one of your opponent's attacks uh, with a Digimon that has the blocker skill. Suspend Cordramon and declare that you are blocking. Using a blocker switches the target of the attack to the one with the blocker, and the two Digimon do battle. Blocking is an important technique to protect your security or important Digimon. In battles, uh, you compare the Digimon's DP of both Digimon. The Digimon with the lowest DP is deleted and sent to the owner's trash. If the two Digimon are the same DP, then it becomes a tie and both of them are deleted. When a Digimon is revealed from the security stack, it becomes a security Digimon and does not battle with your opponent's Digimon. If the attacking Digimon uh, loses uh, or ends the battle in a tie, it's deleted. Security Digimon are sent to the owner's trash regardless uh, of the outcome of the battle. Security Digimon differ from normal Digimon in the fact that uh, they can't activate any effects uh, other than security effects, and uh, aren't affected by card effects uh, that would affect normal Digimon. It's time to try out uh, the option card Shadow Wing. If you're using it from your hand, you activate its main effect. In order to use an option card, you must have at least one Digimon of the same color or one Tamer of the same color on either your battle area or your breeding area. Reveal the Shadow Wing from your hand, then pay the memory cost of one. It's Main effect is one of your Digimon gets uh, plus 3000 DP until the end of the turn. Target Agumon with the effect. With that, Agumon's DP went up from 3000 to a total of 5000, 
Once the option card is used, it goes into the owner's trash. Now you could attack uh, your opponent's suspended Digimon. With Agumon all powered up, uh, attack your opponent's suspended uh, Bearmon. If you attack another Digimon, as long as you aren't blocked up by one of your opponent's other Digimon, the two Digimon will do battle. See how it's still rested, and it gains the DP. Agumon has an inherited effect. These effects cannot be activated when they're on the field as a Digimon, and can only be activated when the Digimon becomes a Digivolution card. Agumon's inherited effect is at your turn this Digimon gets plus 1000 DP, so during your turn, Greymon will get an extra plus 1000 DP. This inherited effect applies even when you Digivolve a Greymon again. Be careful choosing Digimon with inherited effects to Digivolve with, you can breed an incredibly strong Digimon. When you want to check the card's inheritable effects, hold and tap the details. So in paper, you just play the Digimon on top, kind of similar how it's doing here, except uh, it has a section where you could just see the inheritable effects. You can Digivolve with suspended Digimon, but they will stay suspended after the Digivolution. So this goes back into the Digimon you're Digivolving into will take the same state as the Digimon you Digivolved off of. So this will include any buffs or debuffs. Time to play a Tamer card, Taikamiya. Tamer cards have continuous effects that benefit you as long as they're in the battle area. Reveal the Tamer Taikamiya in your hand, then pay its memory cost. Now, because of its effect, all of your Digimon get an additional plus 1000 DP during your turn. Tamer cards cannot attack or block, but they can't be attacked by Digimon either. Also, you have uh, several copies uh, of uh, the same Tamer in play. Their effects stack. Notice how the breeding area did not get any buffs. The breeding area is not affected by card effects at all. This turn, uh, you can't do anything during the breeding phase, so move it onto the main phase. So right there, it's showing me that I don't have to do anything if I want to keep a Digimon in the breeding area. During this turn, declare you're passing the turn to the opponent. So right now it's teaching you what happens when you pass the turn over to the opponent. When you pass it your turn, the memory counter moves it to 3 on the opponent's side of the memory gauge, no matter how much memory you had left. Using the effect of Security Attack plus 1, you could perform checks on two of your opponent's security cards. 
When checking multiple security cards, make sure to check them one at a time. If the Digimon you are attacking with is deleted or returned to your hand in the middle of the security check, the check ends. A check will also end when your opponent has no security cards left. So security attack plus does not carry over to attack the opponent. If you land an attack on your opponent uh, when they have no security left, then you win the game. So that's just a quick tutorial from the tutorial app on how to play. These were using half decks uh, of the starter decks, so they're not necessarily the full decks. But I still think the tutorial app is still a very good thing to have because it could really help start getting your feet wet in some basic gameplay for the Digimon card game. So I'll probably eventually have my own tutorial series where I go over things a little bit more in depth and kind of like explain maybe a little bit better on why certain things are the way they are. But for now, this is just uh, some very basic uh, tutorial that uh, Bandai put together in a t nice little tutorial app that you could download on Android and iOS. So, as always, uh, feel free to tell me your thoughts down in the description below. And uh, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more content. And I will see you in the next video.